In this video, I'm going to look at radical substitution, but I'm going to be looking at the electrons. So we'll use the classic example methane with chlorine in the presence of UV. So the overall reaction, straightforward substitution of a hydrogen atom from the methane with a chlorine atom from the Cl2 molecule. And we get chloromethane and hydrogen chloride. And because there's only been one substitution, this is called monosubstitution. So we'll look at the steps in the mechanism now. So the first step is the initiation step. So what we've got is a chlorine molecule exposed to UV radiation and it's turned into two chlorine radicals. So this dot here is representing an unpaired electron which makes this a radical. So if we look at the dot and cross diagram, hopefully you can see more clearly what's happening. So here's our chlorine molecule. And the bond's been broken in such a way that this chlorine on the left has kept that electron from the bond and the chlorine on the right has kept that electron from the bond. So you can see that there. So there's your unpaired electron, which makes these radicals. So this kind of bond breaking, where there's an equal sharing of electrons from the bond that's broken, is called homolytic fission. We move on to the second step now, it's propagation. Now these always occur in twos or pairs of steps. So I'll call the first one P1. So in this step, the methane molecule is attacked by a chlorine radical and it forms a hydrogen chloride molecule and a different radical now, we've got a methyl radical. So if we look at the dot and cross diagrams, so you can see what's happened is this chlorine radical with its unpaired electron is basically after pairing this up and the easiest way for it to do it is to take one of the hydrogens off the methane and its electron. So it's taking the hydrogen and that red electron so you can see it's formed hydrogen chloride. So if we look at what's left of the methane, we're left with this. So you can see we've got an unpaired electron on the carbon, and so this is a radical. So this is the methyl radical. So if we look at P2 now, the methyl radical reacts with some chlorine that hasn't been broken and forms chloromethane and a chlorine radical. And the dot and cross diagram hopefully makes that nice and clear. So we're wanting to pair that electron up. So the way it does it is it gets hold of one of the chlorine atoms from the molecule and takes its electron as well. And so you can see we've got the electron has been paired up and the leftover of the chlorine molecule is now a radical with this unpaired electron. So if we finish now with the termination steps, so there's more than one possible termination step because basically any two free radicals can combine to form um, a non-radical substance. So the options for this one are two chlorine radicals combining to form a chlorine molecule. So there's the dot and cross diagram for that. A methyl radical and a chlorine radical can form chloromethane. So you'll notice that there are two ways to form the chloromethane via termination, as you've just seen there, and also via propagation. And also, we could have two methyl radicals combining to form an ethane molecule. So the dot and cross diagram would look like that. So a common question on the exam is suggest why the radical substitution method is not a good way to produce a single substance. And straight away you can see there are two possible organic products already on this um, set of slides. We've got chloromethane and ethane. And if the chlorine was in excess, we could continue to strip out the hydrogens one at a time via propagation steps and ultimately we could form tetrachloromethane CCL4.